source. It's a sophisticated multimedia video entertainment system that uses the latest CD technology, not rated for little boys. Hello everyone and welcome back to Player One Start. Today we kind of have a special project to do. In a previous video I actually showcased that I got a Turbo Duo, but it is in need of some repairs. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this console is doing. The Turbo Duo that I got actually worked well when I had them tried out in the store. The problem is, whenever I insert a CD game, I'm not able to get reliable audio out of it. Most of the time the synthesizer music comes out fine, but the audio from a CD actually comes out very muted or cuts off and doesn't play at all. I was able to try this out with the few TurboGrafx CD games that I owned, but the one I decided to show here is the one that I captured first. And that is the game I got with the Turbo Duo. This is Ease 3, Wanderers from Ease. And just to let you know, the hissing sound you are hearing is because I have the volume turned up all the way, so much so that you can actually hear the interference on the audio. I have this turned up as loud as it'll go so you can hear the music and eventually the speech. So yeah, that's definitely going to need some work if I'm going to capture footage using this console for the Ultimate TurboGrafx CD review. Most audio issues on consoles from this time period are mostly due to the fact that the capacitors on the board can go bad, and if they leak all over the board they can cause this issue. And when I started scouring eBay for some replacement capacitor kits, I actually found someone who offers a service of fixing not only the TurboGrafx CD unit, but also the Turbo Duo. After getting in touch with the seller of this service, I was able to schedule not only service for my Turbo Duo console, but also my TurboGrafx CD console, as this system does not always fire up reliably. So believe it or not, I actually consider myself a bit of an amateur when it comes to repairing old retro game consoles. The problem is, I just don't have the experience needed to deal with this. I can probably take the time to research this myself and repair it, but I think it would be worth it to me to save the time, the weeks that it would take to repair this, if someone already knows what they're doing, and can fix it quickly. The downside is, is that I usually would like to do a video where I show myself repairing the console. But thankfully, when I got a hold of the seller, I asked him if he was willing to do some quick video shoots while he was repairing my console, and he agreed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it took to repair this console. Alright, so uh, here is your Duo motherboard. I forgot to do any video or take any pictures of this before I started, so this is actually the finished product. But I'm going to go around and point out all the... Uh, stuff I did to this along with the capacitor change. Uh, it definitely needed new capacitors. There, there were a lot of leaky ones. But uh, the stuff I want to go over is there were multiple areas where the caps had leaked, uh, where I had to clean up parts of the board and repair a bunch of various uh, connections or, or traces uh, to get things working again. So let me turn the board around here. Um, this portion of the board on the back side near the AV port is mainly where more most of the audio um, section is. There, that's a little bit better. Uh, these capacitors, the 10 microfarad capacitors, those were the ones that the, the main reason as to why there was no sound. But let me uh, zoom in here a little bit. Um, you can see right, let, let me grab a screwdriver. You can see right in this area, it's a good example. This is where a capacitor had leaked and damaged the top part of the motherboard. Um, so that's why you see this extra uh, capacitor lead that I used here to go through the board and repair that ground. Uh, it also did the same thing in the capacitor below it. Um, it's hard to see with the, the lighting here, but below it, right in here, it ate off all this green covering for the, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, connection, but it still has continuity underneath. So that, that one's actually fine, even though it looks gross. Um, but I cleaned all of that with a toothbrush and, and uh, isopropic uh, al alcohol 
before putting the new capacitors on. There was also a huge section of it down in here uh, that ate away a lot. And once again, that's a ground and all that's actually still good. It just looks horrible. But the capacitor right above that, right in here, I had to repair the ground and positive for it because this one had leaked and has gotten all over the place. It was like all through this section of the motherboard. Uh, it even leaked under the uh, audio op amp, which I had to remove, cleaned underneath, and then put the uh, then reinstall the op amp. The, the amp was still good. Usually they're still good, um, but uh, yeah. So that that's working good again. Um, after I was done with the capacitor change, let's see, or is there more I need to talk about? Oh, yeah, yeah, same thing here. This 22 microfarad capacitor had leaked all over this area, which is why you see this extra capacitor leak coming through here, repairing this connection and repairing this connection to the board there. Uh, this wire I didn't know I needed to replace till after the job because after I was done with the cap change and I was testing everything out, um, the... Audio for the cards worked great. The audio for the CD worked great, uh, or, or CD audio. But the uh, audio for the ADPCM um, audio chip was not coming out, and that was because of this bad connection here. So that's why you see this little wire bridge to the ground on that capacitor there. Um, another bad area like that over here near the front of the console, near the CD loading light, you can see all this leakage damage around here. Basically, you got lucky because all the leakage just got to connections on the board, meaning none of it went under any important chips. There was no damage to this chip. None of it went under there. Um, I even checked the other side of the board. The other side of the board's good. None of it leaked through to damage any connections over there. Um, all the other capacitors are fine. It's just these really major ones where you can see this green that had just flaked off um, that that had the, the leaking damage. But I only had to um, just basically repair these with, with leads through the motherboard to where they would go to on the other side. Um, and, and all works great. So I'm going to button it back up, put it back together, and uh, should be good to go. Okay, so here's the duo with the um, grounding shield put back over the top. Uh, before I close it up here, I also went ahead and uh, re-greased the rails for the CD lens. You can kind of see one of them back in there. The other one's underneath this plastic part. Um, usually good to do that, even if it's not needed, because in time that, that grease dries up and then the lens doesn't move so freely and it can sometimes create a CD audio uh, dropouts here and there. But... um. Yeah, I'm going to close it up now and uh, start testing out the CD drive to more, uh, some more just to make sure all is good. Um, if there's no audio dropouts, I won't be making any adjustments, but if there are, I'll be uh, moving on to these small uh, potentiometers for the uh, lens to to try to clear that up. So, um, But uh, yeah, cap change all finished up. Um, yeah, should be a reliable system from here on out. So I don't know how many people out there were thinking the same thing that I was when I first saw that footage. I was thinking, that console was in that bad a shape when I bought it? I should definitely have not paid the amount of money I did for that console. It seems to me that either the seller did one of two things. Either they didn't open the console, which I would say is irresponsible for a seller not to do, or they did open the console, saw what kind of shape it was in, and still decided to sell at a premium anyway. So I actually did go back to that store and I talked to the manager a little bit and I just kind of in passing did mention that the console needed a lot of restoration work and they were very apologetic and asked how much it cost for me to get it fixed and they were very gracious enough to give me at least some of my money back, at least in form of store credit. I think that is actually a testament to the brick and mortar retro game stores and I hope that those stores are around for years to come because that is definitely not the service I get online. So it all worked out well and I'm also very thankful to the person who was able to fix my console so thank you very much for getting this done. And now that I have my console back, let's go ahead and take a listen now.
Think back to your worst nightmare. The feeling of dark isolation and helplessness. Smell that fresh sea breeze? The ship is in top shape. We're ready to shove off. And just for comparison, here's how it sounded before. Yeah, this is much better now. A big advantage to having the Turbo Duo over the Turbo CD unit is the fact that it can play Super CD-ROM 2 or Super CD-ROM ROM games. To run games like this on an original TurboGrafx CD requires a card that is very rare today, mainly because you couldn't buy them in stores, you actually had to write in to the console manufacturer in order to get a Super CD-ROM capable card. So again, I am very thankful to have a working Turbo Duo so I can showcase all games that were released for the TurboGrafx-16, not just the ones compatible with the original CD system. Alright, well that's actually going to wrap things up for this video. In the next video, we're actually going to take a look at the TurboGrafx CD and how that console restore went. So stay tuned for that coming out to you real soon. And if any of you have any hardware like this that needs to be repaired, I'm going to leave a link to Chris's site down below. He's actually known as TurboGrafx Fan on eBay, and this is definitely an unpaid endorsement. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned because I have more content coming, and I will see you all in the next one. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.